Hello, my name is Steven Lund. I'm a motion control specialist with Warner Electric Supply. I'm here to talk to you today about setting up a Stratic switch for motion control applications. So typically when you buy a Stratic switch and you install it in your cabinet, it's uh, out of the box, it's set up as an unmanaged switch. You're not going to get all the features that come along with it. So basically what you need to do is do an express setup and also enable PTP functionality. Fundamentally what the PTP function does is that it gives you the ability for the PLC and the servo drives to transmit to each other with time synchronization data encapsulated into the data packet. So the combination of the quality of service and the PTP is going to give you the functionality that you need to be able to do high performance motion applications which can reduce jitter on the network and can improve uh, uh, highly precise and highly dynamic applications so that you can do on the fly cutting in, in a very responsive way and accurate way. So fundamentally it, it's very simple. I'm going to show you how to do it. You're just going to do a, a couple of steps and you can be ready to go. So let's just start it off. So I have this uh, Stratix 5700 switch. That's the one I'm going to show you today. And I'm just going to do a, a straight up uh, hard reset to defaults uh, procedure. So there, you'll see like there's a little express setup button here and I just have a safety pin. Uh, and I'm just going to stick it in there until I can actually see this setup button blink an alternation between green and red. It'll take about eight to 10 seconds. There, I've got it, and now it's going to, after I release it, it's going to go into a factory reset default, reset to default mode. Now, while that's doing that, uh, you're going to want to connect to this, this uh, switch with your PLC, or with your laptop, and you're going to want to enable DHCP so you can accept an IP address from the switch. I've already got that set up on my computer. I'm going to accept a DHCP IP address. So when this is ready, I'm going to be able to go to the next step in, in the process. All right, so now the setup sequence or setup button is blinking and I'm ready to initiate the next command to be able to go to the express setup screen. So I'm just going to take the paper clip again and press the express button just very quickly. And at that point, I'm going to get a little LED to indicate which port I can plug my ethernet cable into. So I see it's port number one. I'm going to connect it. And at that point, the switch is going to serve up an IP address to my laptop. I'm going to wait for that IP address to be assigned into the laptop and I will be able to connect to the switch at that point. In order to be able to connect to the switch, I'm going to type into my browser, I'm using Chrome, uh, the IP address of 169-254-01. Now it's going to pop up with a login. Uh, your username is going to be blank and your password is going to be switch. I'm going to name the switch Stratix 5700 and I'm going to assign a P an IP address. I'm going to do the 192.168.1 domain. I'm just going to enter that in. Pretty simple. I'm going to click submit. It's going to take that setting and it's going to move on to the next step. Now please bear in mind some of these steps take a little while to load because you basically have a Rockwell or Allen Bradley front end script that's running and you also have a Cisco back end that's in the back of the switch that's also running. So it takes a little bit for these two worlds to reconcile each other and move on to the next step. I'm going to click refresh on the browser just to kind of help it along a little bit. And it looks like it didn't like that so I'm going to do it again. And you might run into this yourself, so don't be discouraged. Click Submit. And now, now I can see why that didn't work. Uh, password and confirm password can't be empty, so it shows that I need to have all of these entries filled in. I'm going to put in just admin for everything. And click Submit. Looks like I'm on the right track right now. It's going to take those settings, it's going to enter them in, and it's going to load the next page. At this point, what I need to do is I need to enable smart port, uh, smart port roles, uh, smart port definitions, and also enable PTP in order to be able to use this in a motion application. So I'm going to go to configure. I'm going to go on smart ports. And I'm connected to FA1 slash 1. So I, 
it wouldn't be advisable for me to try to configure that one right now. You can go back later and change that if you want, but for right now I'm going to do FA1 slash 2. I'm going to select that, click edit, and my role is going to be ideally automation device or multi-port automation device. The only thing you need to remember there is are you connecting a device to the switch that has one port or two ports? So if you're familiar with some of our motion products like the 5500 or the Kinetics 5700, they have two ports, so they're a multi-port automation device, whereas our Kinetics 350 has one port, so that's a multi-port, that's just a singular automation device. So for this, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to choose multi-port automation device just to go to the, what I normally do. I'm going to click that, click Submit. It's going to have this little pop-up, Disregard. Then Refresh, and I'll be able to see that it is now assigned a multi-port automation device role. I'm going to go back to Smart Ports. And look, see now you can see port 2 is a multi-port automation device. So that's good. Fundamentally, the, sci the, the information behind that is that it can accept more than one MAC address. Now I'm going to go to PTP. This is the precision time protocol that I was talking about. See, now the default setting is forward, so that's bad. What that means is that uh, the traffic is going to come into the switch and it's going to take that time synchronization data that's been presented to it, and it's not going to acknowledge it. It's just going to forward it on, and it's not going to acknowledge its position within the network. So you could definitely have a situation where you have uh, a large topology for your network, and if you have them all set to forward, by the time that that data re comes from the PLC and goes to the servo, servo and comes back, all of that PTP data was just forwarded on and it wasn't reconciled. So then you're going to have some variation and that can propagate in some jitter on the machine. So what I want to do typically for 90% of applications is just to set this to end-to-end uh, -end transparent. That means that that PTP data is going to be transmitted between the PLC and the, the servo without acknowledgement for the different switches and it's going to look at the, the beginning and the end of that Travel, travel mode between the switches and just reconcile those two time points together to be able to compensate for any delay in the system. So I'm just going to do end-to-end -end transparent. I'm going to click Submit and you'll see now that that will pop up all the ports and it'll show that they are all enabled. Click Submit and I'm done. PTP is now enabled on this switch. One more thing you could do is go to Port Settings and ensure that the switch, the, the switch ports that you have devices connected to are set up to an auto duplex for your speed. So for instance, if I wanted to go check port 2, one that I had enabled before, I would click port 2, click edit, look and see, yep, my speed is uh, set to auto and my duplex is set to auto. So fundamentally when that protocol is initiated upon startup, whatever device is connected to that port uh, and that port and another port with each other, when they negotiate their speed together, they're going to go to the maximum possible speed that's possible. So fundamentally, I am done. I have enabled my smart port roles, I've configured my port settings, and I've enabled PTP. Your static switch should now be ready for motion applications. If you have any additional questions, please contact your local Warner Support representative.